we pick up with the end of mercantilism and the purpose of mercantilism was the colony was to benefit the mother country. If it didn't benefit the mother country, it didn't matter. And that was the last thing that we covered. Now back. The Virginia Company. Uh, I think I'm ahead of myself. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yes. In 1578, Elizabeth gave Sir Humphrey Gilbert a charter. He was to colonize from Cabot's claims. Remember, Cabot had come up here and been in the Newfoundland area. Gilbert took 200 people with him the, in, 18, in sorry, 1583, all to, Newf to Newfoundland. They stayed for two weeks, all got on the boat, and returned home. So, so much for Sir Humphrey Gilbert's uh, colonization there. Sir Walter Raleigh in 1584 the next year received a charter and in 1585 the following year he established a colony of Virginia. This colony was named after the Queen. Now if we were in class together I would say why was Virginia named after the Queen? The Queen was Elizabeth. Well, Queen Elizabeth never married, so she was oftentimes referred to as the Virgin Queen. So Virginia named after Queen Elizabeth. <coughs> Excuse me. One year. Yeah. He receives his charter. And Roanoke Island will be the colony that will be founded. Year later, in 18, 1586, he sends 200 people over to Roanoke Island. Now, current day Roanoke would be right there, Roanoke Island. And it is not in the state of Virginia. But at that time, the Virginia colony, the boundaries and everything were rather nebulous. So he takes 200 people over there in 1586. He drops them off and says, just stay. Don't run away. I will be back in one year with a ship full of supplies. He does not return the next year. He does not return for four years. And when he gets to Roanoke Island, there are no people there. A map from back then of Roanoke Island, not all that big of an island. Their colony that they um, created to protect themselves, then they would have done farming outside of the colony. Once again, showing a circular blockade to try and protect the colonists from any type of aggressive action, whether from the sea or from the natives. What happened to Roanoke? Nobody knows. It is therefore referred to in history as the lost colony of Roanoke. If you would like to get your Ph.D. and figure out what happened to the colony of Roanoke, everyone would probably be very thrilled if you could solve that mystery. For 500 years, no, 400 years plus, no one has been able to solve that mystery. They did find on one of the trees a carving of Croatian and that was one of the Indian tribes on the mainland a little ways off. And so they didn't know, does that mean that they left and went to live with those Indians? Were they captured by those Indians? Were they killed by those Indians? As you can see, once again, the blockade here. And you would have had a one-way 
place only where you could enter. <coughs> Excuse me. More recently, they have found the what's referred to as the Dare Stone. And one of the individuals who was of those 200, her name was Dare. And her family background was actually in um, carving in rock. And so she had some talent or ability to do that. And some people have looked at it and said, oh, you know, this is wrong, this is wrong. Well, if you go back to the English that would have been used in the 1500s, all the little things that you're saying, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, are actually right for that time period. And so most historians feel that the Dare st Stone is actually correct. And she had left a record um, on this stone. There have been since numerous fakes that have people have created and come up with, but this is the only one that fits all of the correct information for that time period. What happened? I don't know. Did they get killed off by Indians? Did they get killed off by pirates? Did they die of disease? Did they die of starvation? Did they blend into the local inhabitants and marry and those that survived? Some have felt that the facial structure of some of the Indians in the area around Roanoke Island have a little bit more of a European look to them. And is this grounds for saying, well, the colonists, those that survived, went and intermarried and lived amongst the Indians. Who knows? Maybe it was alien abduction. We may never know. There are three types of colonies that the English will use in North America. That is charter, royal, and proprietary. You need to know the difference between the three. A charter colony is where the king grants a contract. This is a document, and there is usually multiple owners. It's like a stock company. You buy stock in Coca-Cola or whatever. So it's a multiple owner organization for the purpose, usually always, of netting a return, a monetary return for the investors. A royal colony was one that the king owned. He ran it with the help of a royal governor. So any rules, regulations, laws he wanted to make, he would send them down the pike and the royal governor of that colony would make sure that the rules were followed. And the third was proprietary. This is privately owned, whether by a single individual such as William Penn, who owned Pennsylvania, or if it is a group of individuals, such as the colony of Georgia. So privately owned is proprietary. Royal, the king owns it. Charter, it's like a stock company, many owners who buy stock. They would not be involved necessarily all of the scads of owners in the day-to-day -day running of the colony, but the board of directors would have a lot of control of that. And the colony of Virginia. So right down here, Roanoke Island has failed. We will now talk about the colony of Virginia. And the Potomac River is its current day northern boundary. 
the Virginia Company was established in 1606. It was made to pool money. So I don't have enough money to create an expedition. You don't have enough money. But if we get hundreds of us together and pool our money, we can do this. They were granted by the king 10,000 acres. Jamestown, and Jamestown is right there, um, about where that dot is on the James River. Jamestown was a business venture. Yeah, there was a little bit of God and country and whatnot, but mainly this was for economic gain. In 1607, three vessels carrying a hundred people came to the James River. This is another date I want you to know. 1492, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Yeah, we got John Cabot sailing around up there claiming stuff for England, but the first enduring, Roanoke didn't endure. The stuff in Newfoundland didn't endure. This is the first colony that will stick, and that is Jamestown. So you need to know, 1607, first English permanent colony. As I said before, possession is nine-tenths of the law. We now have something that has stuck. Between 1607 and 1622, there were 6,000 people, immigrants that came to Jamestown. But by the time you hit um, 15 years later, 1607 to 1622, you would think, oh, there's got to be a lot of people living there because 6,000 immigrants came. No, the population was less than 2,000. Why? For a number of reasons. Some people came, stayed a while, said, this is not for me, went back home, or went to other colonies or places in the New World. But mainly, they died. They died like flies. Jamestown suffered from poor planning and poor leadership. They were adventurers interested in getting rich quick. These people came over with picks and shovels, going to run around and look for gold. The Spanish, with the Incan, Incan Empire and the Aztec Empire, had had galleons coming home on a regular basis, just loaded with gold. And so everyone felt all we got to do is go to the New World and run around picking up gold nuggets. So there was no gold in Virginia. And so all of their running around availed them little. They should have been building shelters, houses, forts to defend themselves. They needed to plant crops, figure out ways to acquire food. But no, they were eating it as fast as they could because they were going to get these gold nuggets and sail back home. There was no private ownership of land at first. All right, so if you want to make these people into farmers and grow crops, that's a big thing for many Englishmen. Have my own land. Well, there was no private ownership of land. So what would cause you to have an incentive to do that? It was only Captain John Smith who would save the colony. And once again, right on the... James River, this colony is located. And they used a triangular shape in building their colony. This is artist's rendition of early shelters created in Jamestown. They were not using lumber to make sturdy homes to survive in the winter. Instead, it was nothing but to Sheets, tarps taken off the ship, um, hung amongst the trees. Here you could have held meetings, you could have held church, you could have held anything you wanted, but definitely not a secure building.
Only Captain John kept the colony, Captain John Smith kept the colony together. It also didn't help when they had such poor Indian relations because they swindled the Indians, which got the Indians angry at them. So when they run out of food and want help from the Indians, they are not on a good relation. Here, the por portrait, blah, 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 blah. the picture of Captain John Smith, Admiral of New England, and that same picture used on a U.S. stamp, 1860, no, 1560, Captain John Smith's um, birth to... 1860 to 1621. Jamestown's 1607, so he will live um, about 20, 23 years or so after Jamestown is founded, a U.S. stamp. And I wonder if that's supposed to be one cent or one dollar. Cannot even tell. And, of course, two Indian heads there. Artist rendition of Captain John Smith trying to trade with the Native Americans to keep the colonists from starving to death. He also went so far as for the Europeans' interest to try and create a uh, dictionary of different words and how using English characters you would pronounce Powhatan's hey, careful, careful, careful um, sorry, the dog um, how you would say these words in the local dialect Pocahontas She's a big thing in U.S. history, and partly because of Disney and other things, a lot of their relationship has been falsified, made to seem romantic where it never was. Now, Pocahontas did supposedly at one stage save Captain John Smith's life, but they never married, they never were lovers, she did ultimately convert to uh, Christianity. She will marry John Rolfe, who we'll come to in just a bit. If you want to know how close and loving their relationship is, John Rolfe will take her and their infant son from Virginia over to England. There she will be treated as royalty. She was the hottest ticket in town. Everyone wanted to see this American princess. She was even presented to the king and queen. She would uh, was invited to parties at court. Oh, if you wanted to be somebody and have the newspapers write up about your party and all the who and who's were there, there was nothing like having Pocahontas at your party. And apparently at one of the parties, Captain John Smith was there. He had had to leave Jamestown because of a bad injury he suffered. And she ran into Captain John Smith at one of these functions. And she walked up to him and slapped him full on on the face and walked away. So much for <laughs> love interests. <laughs> but yes, Pocahontas... <sighs> What is this doing to me? See, I tell you, this thing's been fighting me all day long. Uh, I want to sh shut down. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Hang on. How do I get you back in yeah, a picture? All right. Let's try that. Oh, no. Oh, no. I need to go to PowerPoint. Ah! Whew! 
There you are again. Whew. Um, so at the beginning, there was probably some working together with Pocahontas and the English, but yes, there is not a love story there. Jamestown. I have never visited there. Uh, 20 some years ago, I got in the vicinity, but never got a chance to actually make it over to Jamestown. These are some pictures a student of mine once brought back from having visited there. They have a ship like the pilgrims, uh, the um, people from Jamestown would have come over in there on the edge of the water of the James River. All Indians do not live in teepees. The coastal Indians, with the snow and whatnot, and the fact that they did not move around and need a house that could be taken up and put down within a couple hours' time, they had permanent homes. And oftentimes these would be multi-family or multi-generational homes. Ultimately, Jamestown will grow tobacco as one of their products. And here, it's, they've either had a dust storm or no one's cleaned the old tobacco off in a while. You would hang tobacco to dry, and this is some very nasty, dusty-looking tobacco. Some of their stores that they would have had, wine, olive oil, different things stored in kegs, and they look like they need a good cleaning as well. The colonists ultimately will build a fort, and as I said, they will use a triangular shape to build their fort and right on the James River. In 1612, John Rolfe began growing tobacco in Jamestown. Ten years later, it was the colony's principal crop. Remember, grow something that we have to go outside of the empire to purchase. Smoking had become very fashionable in Europe, and everyone had to go to Spain to get their tobacco. Well, now, England is going to grow its own tobacco and keep the money in the empire. Another picture of John Rolfe growing tobacco. It was this crop, tobacco, which ultimately economically saved the colony. The, if we're going to want people to grow tobacco, we need to give them an incentive. And so it was decided to offer 50 acres of land to people who would be willing to come over to the Virginia colony. People came over, for the most part, as indentured servants. And yes, um, interesting, it doesn't call it tobacco smoking. It's listed as a tobacco drinker back in 1623. The time period a person came over as an indentured servant could vary, but usually in the most common was seven years. So I need help to farm my piece of land. And we'll discuss later um, about why the United States would ultimately, for the most part, rely on slavery, but initially it was indentured servants. And you paid for their passage. So this was someone who was poor, who was willing to make a fresh start in the United States, in, the, in America, but doesn't have the money to pay the ship's passage. And then once he gets here, he doesn't have food, he doesn't have shelter, and so someone pays your way over, teaches you a trade, such as growing tobacco, you feeds you, houses you, and in seven years you are then free 
to start your own place up. Mm -hmm. But life as a indentured servant wasn't always all that grand. The owner knew he had only seven years to get as much work out of you as possible before you were then a free man and could go and have a farm and grow tobacco to rival what he is doing. So life as an indentured servant in any respect was usually not the greatest. And I have a ballad here from that time period, the 1600s, that provides a glimpse into the life of a maiden. The name of the song is The Trapped Maiden or The Distressed Damsel. Since the first I came to this land of fame, which is called Virginio, the axe and the hoe have wrought my overthrow, when that I am weary, 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 weary o. When my dame says go, then I do so in the land of Virginio. When she sits at meat, then I have none to eat, when that I am weary, 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 weary o. Instead of beds of ease to lie down when I please in the land of Virginio, Upon a bed of straw I lie down full of woe, when that I am weary, 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 weary o. I have played my part both at plow and cart in the land of Virginio. Billets from the wood upon my back they load, when that I am weary, 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 weary o. Then let maids beware all of my ill fate in the land of Virginio. Be sure to stay at home, for if they do here come, you will be weary, 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 weary o. So here her experience was, stay at home. Don't come here. It's just not worth it. King James. Jamestown, named after King James who handed out the charters for Jamestown. The colony of Virginia was named after the Virgin Queen Elizabeth. So this is just the small colony in Virginia, named after King James. He was against the Virginia experiment of growing tobacco. He hated tobacco smoking, which had been introduced to the new world by the conquistadors. In 1604, this is before Virginia has even been founded, he wrote a pamphlet and in it, one of the excerpts with regard to tobacco smoking, he says, a custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose, harmful to the brain, dangerous to the lungs, and in the stinking fume thereof nearest resembling the horrible Stygian smoke of the pit Hades that is bottomless. King James, 1604. Now, that could very well be a Surgeon General's warning on the side of a pack of cigarettes. Uh, you know, so many people sued in the 70s. And, My father died. We had no idea it would cause cancer. Everybody has known. Shoot, 400 years ago, King James knew. A custom loathsome to the eye, hateful to the nose. Oh, yeah, that uh, smoke sure does stink. Harmful to the brain, dangerous to the lungs, and he said, it smells like hell. <laughs> We've always known it wasn't good for you. And I skipped too far here. There we go. Pocahontas. This is the considered to be the most, and there you have it on the postage stamp, accurate depiction of Pocahontas. And she is over in England briefly, dressed up as a English person, a very high statue. After all, she was the American princess. You wouldn't wear commoner's clothes. You would get dressed up. Rebecca, daughter of the mighty Prince Powhatan, emperor of 
I'm not going to even try and pronounce that. At Virginia, converted and baptized in the Christian faith and wife of Thomas Rolfe. Yes, she takes on a Christian name once she converts of Rebecca. 1595 to 1617. So the colony is founded 1607. Uh, seven plus five, that makes her about 13 years old when she would have encountered the ship in the James River, founding of Jamestown. So very young, adolescent. And she did not live that long, speaking of which. Some postage stamps of Pocahontas. This one from Tongo, country of Tongo. And of course, Disney did their whole thing of Pocahontas and all of this. Um, so we have the Disney Pocahontas stamps and came out a number of years ago. Artist conception of Pocahontas's baptism. Here you have what would be a very considerable building, which I doubt they had in Jamestown at that time because it was in Jamestown that she converted, which should be something made out of like a, more like a log cabin. And it has Native Indians, probably supposed to be her father there. I have no idea if he was there. We actually kidnapped her and held her for ransom for food at one stage with the Powhatan. So I doubt <laughs> everything was quite so peachy keen as this. And the marriage of Pocahontas to John Rolfe. And once again, they have what looks like a rather substantial building and the Indians in attendance. I don't know if they would have been very thrilled about such a thing or not. Another artist conception of John Rolfe and Pocahontas' marriage. We got two different ones here with, of course, natives present as well as the Englishmen's. Englishmen being present. And the last one. Pocahontas was presented to King James I along with her husband, John Rolfe. So she was seen as royalty and presented to the king and his wife. I don't have time to cover all of the details with you on Pocahontas. And so one of the articles that you will be reading, it's one of those that you have to log into the library with your number that's on your ID card and read it. Unfortunately, you don't get the pictures on your article. And this is from, um, I think it was U.S. News and World Report. Hang on, hang on. Yes, U.S. News and World Report, January 29th, um, or February 5th, 2007. So it's a bit old, but the information is the same. And one other article that you will read will be the first black Americans. You will need, read to, need to read Pocahontas and this article before test number one. There will be a couple questions off of it on the test. Now, once again, you will not get the picture or anything, so it will come out to actually only about half page of writing when you go in to find this article. Pocahontas. Um, let me see if I can find a good map here of Europe. Um, John Rolfe brought her and their infant son, as I mentioned, over um, to... Okay. No, that's not good enough. Let me find... Ah, there we go over to England and 
she did not care for the weather at all. She was not used to that cold and clammy weather of England. And so she said, we are leaving. And so she, uh, I don't know. I don't think they said stayed much more than a year, somewhere around a year's time. They got on the ship here at London and sailed off. And right before they had their last touchdown, you know, get supplies, the ship stopped here before they head over to Virginia, their last stopping point. She had become very ill. And so she, she, her husband and infant child got off the ship. She died there in England. She never made it back onto the ship. The little town that's located there, they have a sign. It's one of those tiny towns where the welcome to and the you are leaving is written on the front and back of the same sign. But they advertise we are the resting place of Pocahontas. Pocahontas died and is buried here. The problem is no one knows where she is buried. People of nobility oftentimes were buried in the floor of the church. Well, the church that was there at the time Pocahontas died later burned to the ground. And a new one was later rebuilt, but no one has records. Did they take and take the people out of the floor of the church and bury them in the graveyard on the hill? Or was she never buried in the floor of the church, but buried on the hillside in the first place? So no one is exactly sure where her grave is. She never makes it back to Virginia, but her infant son does go back home with daddy, and he lives to have children of his own. And there are hundreds of Americans who claim ancestry to Pocahontas, one of which is Wayne Newton, Mr. Las Vegas. That was what he was known for and where he sang all the time, did shows. He has since moved, and now you will catch him in Branson, Missouri. But one of our first ladies also, hey, hey, president's wife, yeah, doesn't get higher than that in American aristocracy. One of our president's wives claims descent to, to Pocahontas, and... If we were present together, I would ask you to guess which president's wife claims ancestry to Pocahontas. And it is Dr. The only president with an earned doctorate degree. Dr. Thomas Woodrow Wilson. Yeah, everyone knows him as Woodrow Wilson. His first name was Thomas. Dr. Thomas Woodrow Wilson. His second wife, Edith Bowling Galt, was her name before he married her. They were both widowers when they married. She claimed to be a descendant of Pocahontas. So who would have guessed that American princess made it all the way her ancestry did to the White House? And... That is enough material for today. Please, there will be a quiz, two-point quiz on Wednesday. Um, enjoy the lecture. See you then. Bye.